What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we have got the top 5 best and worst value small forwards in NBA 2K18 my team. So if we get it 300 likes on this video that would be insane, and anyway, now let's go on to the list. First of all we're going to start off with the 5 worst value small forwards. These are not the 5 worst small forwards, and to be honest the best player on this entire list isn't the worst value, it's just the worst for your MT. So it's not necessarily how good or bad the players are, it's just all based on value. At number 5 we've got Shane Battier for 55k MT. The reason why he's number 5 and not number 1 is I know he do is part of a collection and he is quite rare. But that collection is for Rudy Gay who's not that good a card. Rudy Gay does not come with any Hall of Fame badges, is an average 3 point shooter and not even an above 90 dunk. Like honestly, there are Sapphire cards that are as good as that Rudy Gay card, there's Rubies that are way better than that Ruby Gay, Rudy Gay card, and there's cards you can pick up for 15k MT that are better than that Rudy Gay card. For that reason, this Shane Battier is on the list. At number 4 is Sapphire Carmelo Anthony, who goes for 13.5k MT. The reason for this card being on the worst value list is because for, I'd say maybe 1000 MT more, you can pick up the Ruby Mellow, who comes with 2 extra Hall of Fame badges, and the same personality badges. Um, actually this one has more by the looks of it, the one on the left. As a plus 13 standing left, plus 10 driving left, way, way better at shooting. Like, plus 8 open shot 3, plus 10 off dribble shot 3. Even though the rest of the stats are literally the same, he's just so much worse at shooting and they're basically the same price. So for that reason I'm going to have to put um, Carmelo Anthony down in the worst value. And I know he's part of the collection for Kevin Garnett, but that Kevin Garnett card is alright I guess, but um, every week that card's getting less and less relevant, this card's going up and up in price, so he's going to stay in the worst value list. And number 3 for 20k MT, we've got Sapphire Tobias Harris. So the Matchup Nightmares collection literally gives you a Ruby card. So the Matchup Nightmares collection gives you a Ruby Yao Ming card. And that Ruby Yao Ming card is alright I guess, but nothing incredible. As well as the Rubies being incredibly expensive, Sabonis and um, Kevin McHale. This is a really, really expensive collection. And to be honest, Ch with Chinese New Year coming up, it's very, very likely that in the next batch of the Signature Series cards, like what they did with the Iverson, like what they did with the Hakeem and Whiteside, that we're going to get a Yao Ming card. So that could mean this set is useless. And my kind of foresight and prediction is the reason why he's on this list for worst value cards. Those are three gold badges, but he's got an 80 post fadeaway, which is all right, 80 post hook. So he's going to be decent in the post. Almost shot mid-92 is good. Almost shot 3 of 84 is not terrible. Free throw 84 is alright. 78 ball control, not great. He's got good enough rebounding stats, which are helpful, I guess, but not the biggest deal for a small forward. Terrible lateral quickness. So he's going to be terrible on defense. Like, even his defensive stats are bad. So he's woeful on defense and slightly above average on offense. And he's got a driving of only 63, which is not great. Speed is okay, I guess, with a driving dunk tendency of 80. So this card, like, it's average to a below average um, small forward who costs 20k. For this price, you can literally buy numbers 1 through 4 on my best value list. And I'm being dead serious. 1 through 4 on my best value list cost the exact same as this card here. And in my opinion, 3 of those 4 are better than this card. So definitely a really bad value card. Not a bad card, but bad value. And number 2 is arguably the best small forward in the game, Paul Pierce, for well over 200k. I know he's part of the collection for um, Penny Hardaway, but that Penny Hardaway is not worth 200k in itself. So Paul Pierce, really nice card, this is better than the diamond last year. I really good card, great post fadeaway 95, unbelievable shot mid, open shot 3 is good as well. He's got a good free throw, can speed boost. Um, rebounding not the best, defense good, but actually no, defense really, really good. I don't know why I said but there, but he's got a good driving dunk, good speed, speed, ball acceleration, and just an overall beast of a card. Just not worth 200k. Straight up, no matter how good this card is, 200k is so, so much for a card. And with the fact that the new signature diamond cards are so cheap and they're going to keep releasing signature diamond cards... I would never ever suggest to pay over 100k for a player until realistically a playoffs because honestly this card is better yes but not that much better than two of the cards in the best value list to be honest and those cards are like 12 and 8k and at number one is Bobby Jones I know he's only seven and a half K MT but like he's part of a not great collection you might be saying okay how for seven and a half K is this guy the worst value 
Just look at his stats. Like, he's a great defensive card, yes, but doesn't come with any gold badges. Um, he's got post hook and post fade with 80 and 69. Not the best. He's got an open shot mid of 88, which is not terrible. Open shot 3 of 30. 30! Terrible ball control. Rebounding stats. Uh, defensive is quite good. Lateral quickness of 84, which is okay, I guess. Um, his block and steal aren't very good. On ball defense is great. Low post defense is great. But, like, what's the use of them IQ stats if he's got not great lateral quickness and a poor steal and block? And also, not the best shot contest either of 83. Driving of 70, 70 speed, 48 speed with ball. Driving dunk tendency of 80, and bad vertical. Like, this card is one of the worst offensive small forwards in the game, if not the worst, and he's 7k MT. So now we're on to the top 5 best value. At number 5 is Elgin Baylor, 7,900 MT. So Elgin Baylor is 93 defense overall, 92 offense overall, comes with 3 gold badges. He's also got microwave and clutch performer, which are good ones. And um, he's an 85 post fade with 84 post hooks, he's great in the post. He's got an 89 over shot mid, 82 over shot 3, which is not bad at all. 86 ball control, so he can play at the point guard. And if you're playing with the point guard, he can abuse other point guards in the post. Good rebounding stats, which help, but aren't the biggest deal. Lateral quickness is good of 90. He's got not the best deal. On ball defense, like you have 82, not great. But he is solid on that end of the floor. Good driving of 85 with a tendency of 100. Speed 89, speed ball 88, acceleration 89. And it's just a mismatch problem. One of the, definitely one of the better small forwards in the game. And can still definitely compete in Supermax despite only being an 8K MT player. Probably on all of these lists, I'm going to have at least one 500 MT player. And at number four, I've got Robert Covington. So Robert Covington is a beast of a card. Like... 89 defense overall, 75 offense overall. If you're just starting out the game, this is the perfect card to pick up. Obviously, it doesn't come with any badges, but he does have micro, which is good with the half. His release is cash. Not the best driving layup. He's a 6'9 small forward, so he's tall. Open shot mid of 74, which isn't the best. Open shot 3 of 89, which is really, really good, as well as his release being money. Like, if he's open in the corners, he doesn't miss. And if you've been watching my Harden's House series, he's one of my best shooters. Free throw of 82 is good. His defense is really good as well. 88 lateral quickness, 83 steal. On ball defense of IQ of 89. Not the best low post defense of IQ. Not a great driving dunk, speed, speed of ball, or acceleration. He's there just to shoot threes and play defense. And while not the best card in general, or overall not the best card, the fact that he's 500 coins, the minimum of any player, and in my opinion is the best small forward you can pick up for that price. And if you're just starting out the game, is a must, must have in your team. Because while he's not going to be a standing out player, if he's like the fifth best player on your on the court at any given stage, you can still compete in Supermax. And I've shown that you can in my Harden's House series where he's done really well. And number three for 13.9k, I think that's you. Actually, no, 13.5k is Ruby Carmelo Anthony. So this Carmelo Anthony is literally the exact same price as Sapphire. And as I've showed, it's a better card. So Melo, I'll go over stats in depth. 88 driving layup. He's got an 87 post fadeaway. 95 shot mid. 95 off dribble and contested as well. Does he have gold difficult shots? Yes, he does. So he hits a ton of fadeaway uh, mid-range shots. I was wondering why he hit loads of them. He's got a 90 home shot three, which is a big, big upgrade from his uh, Sapphire card. He's also got 85 free throw, 86 ball control, meaning speed boost, and is great as a tertiary ball handler, or even a primary ball handler if you want to run a point forward. 74 lateral quickness, not great. Like, not good on defense. Straight up, not good on defense. He's got a 70 driving dunk with a tendency of 80. He dunks a little bit, but he's not the best dunker. The 93 speed, 87 speed with ball, 92 acceleration, which is unbelievable. So he's one of the fastest cards in the game, one of the best shooters in the game. Not great on defense, and but that's basically it. And he's 13K. Yes, 13K for a guard this good. So if you haven't picked him up, and you even have 13k, pick him up. Because he can honestly be the best player on a team that can compete in Supermax. And I'm being dead serious, this guy is that good. At number two for 950 MT, we've got Jared Jeffries. So Jared Jeffries comes a goal defense stopper, and he's six foot eleven small forward. He's a 6'11 small forward, so he's Yanis height. I think in real life, Jared Jeffries played center more often than he played small forward, but I'm not gonna complain. He also couldn't shoot threes and 2K gave him a three ball. He's got a decent-ish driving layup. He's got an open shot made of 82, open shot 3 of 75, with the generic release, which is the same release Pete Maravich has. And if he's open, he does not miss. He's also got 100 driving dunk tendency, which is good. He's got a 76 free throw. He's got decent-ish rebounding stats, 70 block, 80 steal. On-ball defense of IQ of 88, lateral quickness of 89, which is really good for 6'11 player. 71 driving dunk, but with the 100 tendency, dunks a ton. 80 speed, 79 speed of ball, 80 acceleration. 
he can honestly play two through five on offense and can defend one through five on offense. The most versatile defender I've used this year. I've literally played him all five positions and there's not one position he's done badly in. A beast of a card and a must buy if you're standing on my team. And at number one, this card's actually gone up in price. This card, when I, yesterday, would have been about 6.5k MT. So obviously people are snapping this card up. Maybe it's just getting rarer. But for 9k MT, I still have it at number one, to be honest. It's that good. And it's Gerald Wallace. Gerald Wallace has got a 90 driving layup. He's got an open shot made of 88 with one of the best releases in the game. He's also got an open shot 3 of 87. Like, he barely misses for me. He is absolutely money. He's also got ball control of 86, which is good. And that means that he can speed boost. So he's a great offensive card. And then he's got decent rebounding as well. But at the same time, while being a great offensive card, is one of the best defensive cards in the game. 96 lateral quickness, 96 steal, 70 block, 97 shot contest. On ball defense by Q, 96. He's got a um, driving dunk of 90 with a tendency of 95. Speed, 88. Speed with ball, 80. Acceleration, 87. So there's honestly nothing this card can't do. He's like, normally you'd say at the Ruby tier, you've got a guy that can excel in offense or defense, one or the other. But this card is arguably the best defensive card in the game right now. Maybe the Kurilenko Amethyst is probably more, a little bit more versatile. And also has the ability to go to the basket, dunk. Has a great mid-range shot, a great release. He's great in system proficiencies. And it's just a beast of an offensive card. So easily one of, if not the best value cards in my team right now. So anyway, that's the video. In my opinion, these are the five best and worst value small forwards in NBA 2K18. My team, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.